Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here, playing a new game for a series that I expect will last quite a while, Dream Quest. If you don't know, this is a deck-building roguelike. It came out in May of 2014 and has been kind of a sleeper hit. It's sort of a cult classic. I didn't even know the game existed until a couple of months ago when I first found out about Meteor Fall, which is this game's hipper, slicker, more accessible, and way better looking cousin. Um, I'm hoping that the deck building roguelike genre really takes off thanks to games like Meteor Fall and another game that's uh, getting pretty hot right now, Slay the Spire. Uh, but this is the game that began it all, so I'd like to do a series on it even though I'm not a uh, pro play all day or kind of guy at this game. So let's go ahead and begin our starting guide. Uh, I'm going to create a new profile. I'm going to call this one Papa Boris. And when you create a new profile, one of the first things that you need to do is decide what difficulty you're going to play on. Now, you can change this in between runs, so you don't have to stick with it. Obviously, you can change it to something different every run that you want. But I do want to explain what the differences are. So Kitten is the easiest difficulty, and I don't recommend playing it on it because you, are, you don't get any achievements or achievement points. Now, the achievement points is not that big of a deal, as we'll see, but not being able to earn achievements is a huge deal. So I know this may seem like it's putting the cart before the horse a little bit, but let's talk about achievements in this game and why it's important that you be able to achieve them. This game has approximately 1.7 Gerbiltillion achievements, and the achievements, some of them which are very easy, like die once. That's a pretty easy one. You'll definitely do that one pretty soon. Uh, not only give you, you know, bragging rights or stuff like that, but they actually give you um, new things that affect subsequent runs. So, for example, um, this one gives you access to the skull crack card. So if you don't unlock it, you're never going to have the skull crack card. Uh, you know, this one gives you the exhaustion card. Now, these are not all necessarily good cards, but some of the talents and cards that you unlock through achievements are really strong. And if you read like the pro guides for this game, when they talk about beating the final boss, all of them reference talents and cards, and in some cases even classes, that can only be unlocked through achievements. And that's another thing. The game begins with four classes, the typical quartet of fighter, rogue, mage, priest, but there are 10 classes that you can unlock through, wait for it, achievements. So if you play on kitten difficulty, you're really screwing yourself over because you don't get any new cards, any new talents, or any new classes. So you're really just playing a very kind of poor man's version of the game. Now, it says here that Grizzly Bear is the default difficulty for the game. That is a lie. Uh, this is not the default difficulty. The default difficulty is Velociraptor, because when the game first came out, the, there was only one difficulty, and that difficulty was Velociraptor. Now, this got retconned later on, uh, and then Grizzly Bear became the default difficulty. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I am not a stickler for playing on hardest difficulties in games, but because this game did initially start with Velociraptor difficulty, that is the one that I'm going to be playing on, and uh, you are going to watch a dumpster fire circus parade on wheels. I will die a lot. It's going to be gruesome. There will be two things visible from the moon, the Chinese wall and the corpses of the bodies that formerly housed the souls of all the adventurers I allowed to get murdered. So it's very, very difficult. So I'm playing on this just to be, you know, kind of true to the original spirit of the game, but there's nothing wrong with playing on Grizzly Bear. Now, if you play on Velociraptor, when it says the game is much more difficult, what that means is that you start with more crappy cards in your deck, you get less gold, so it's harder to buy new cards, and uh, monsters, you know, have, will have some of their numbers tweaked as well to obviously not be in your favor. Now, you get double the number of achievement points, um, and find additional content. What exactly does that mean? Well, there are three dungeons in this game, three floors, I should say, and on Grizzly Bear, basically the objective is to clear the third floor. So once you clear the third floor, you win. On Velociraptor, there's an uber boss after you clear the third floor, and then that is the ultimate achievement in this game. I've never done it. I've never even come close. The ultimate boss is ridiculously hard, to the point where there's really only a handful of uh, viable builds that could possibly even have a shot at killing him. I don't know if I'm even going to kill him in this playthrough. Let's just be real, really clear here. I'm not sure I'm ever going to do it on camera, but I will try. I will definitely try. So anyway, uh, if you want to have the ultimate achievement in this game, you have to play in Velociraptor. So it's not like, you know, say, Faster Than Light or Darkest Dungeon, where playing on the harder difficulty is just an extra challenge. There's actually a bit of gated content in this uh, higher difficulty. 
Now, what does it mean to get double the number of achievement points? Well, this is something I really like, and I really hope that more games steal this or do this. Basically, I was talking earlier about the achievements. Let's go to the, the back here. Um, so, let's say that uh, you really want to have uh, the Archmage talent. It's a very good talent. It's mentioned in quite a few guides. It makes all your spells cost zero mana, so it's pretty strong. Um, to get this, you have to have 50 base mana, which can be a little bit difficult to pull off. But, alternatively, you can spend 2,000 achievement points to unlock it without doing the thing that would unlock it normally. The achievement points are shown in the upper left-hand corner here, and basically every monster that you kill and every floor that you clear gives you achievement points. So you can just play the game a whole bunch of times, and even if you die, you'll, as long as you killed at least a couple of monsters, or maybe even cleared a floor or two, you get these achievement points and you can save them up and unlock the talents that you want. Now, you have to obviously go to the wiki to figure out which of these are valuable, but for the most part, um, you know, once you've decided that you want something, a little bit of grinding will get you there. There are some exceptions. So, for example, um, unlocking the dragon class requires 10,000 achievement points. And it's very difficult. You have to clear the dungeon as each of the advanced classes, which don't even start out unlocked. You have to unlock the assassin, monk, necromancer, paladin, ranger, and samurai, and then clear the dungeon with all six of them, and then you get the dragon. So that's why this is so expensive. But, you know, you, you, could, you could save up the 10,000 and do it, and maybe I'll do something like that in this video series so that we can see the dragon class. So, um, getting double the achievement points is a perk of playing on Velociraptor difficulty, although, of course, uh, the biggest uh, achievement point gains are for clearing floors, and you're going to clear less floors when you play on Velociraptor than when you play on Grizzly Bear. So, you may get, actually, more achievement points overall by playing on Grizzly Bear. For your own games, unless you're, like, a really crazy grognard, uh, I'd go for Grizzly Bear, but here I'll just be doing Velociraptor, because that's what the original game was. Okay, wow, that was a lot of talk about difficulty levels. Now, let's go ahead and start to play. You, at the beginning of the game, choose a class, and you can choose a random class, which is nice. I think Meteor Fall could learn from this. Definitely being able to choose a random class is kind of nifty, but we're going to go ahead and pick the Warrior, because the Warrior is, well, not simple. No class in this game is simple, but the Warrior has the simplest gameplay, shall we say. Okay, so there's some introductory text, which actually matters in a way, uh, but not, not for this video. Uh, basically, so there's some lines here that have a slightly different description each time, and what these do is they give you a clue as to what the final boss's overpowered ability will be. He has lots of overpowered abilities to choose from, but in each playthrough has only like a certain subset. So like yellow fingernails and tiny feet, when he speaks, those that disobey are punished cruelly, that, that gives you a clue as to what his overpowered ability will be. Now I'm not going to get anywhere close to the final boss, so I'm just not going to read any of this text, and we're going to move on. Now you can see that the graphics in this game look like they were designed in MS Paint by a monkey with Down Syndrome, and uh, that's definitely part of the charm. Uh, let's talk about how the game works. There's two levels to the game. There's the combat game, where you, you know actually fight a monster using deck building mechanics and so on. And then there's the meta game, where you wander around the dungeon floor. So you click on a space to move to it, and as you move to a space, it reveals the fog of war, which is lovingly rendered in black. Um, there are things that you can find as you move around. So these things are walls. Now you'll notice they look like clouds. That's because we're in like the air level. There's six different environments that you can be in. There's the air level, a fire level, a forest level, like some kind of underground level, I think. Uh, yeah, so, you know, really. It's, it's interesting because although the game's art is hilariously terrible, the fact that the person who made this game actually went to the lengths of like making like different colored floors and like different colored walls just shows that the game was made with a lot of love. Um, the different classes, in addition to starting with different decks, so here's the Warrior's starting deck of 10 cards, um, have a class ability. Now, the Warrior's ability is Smash. Smash allows you to break a wall. And the reason this might be important is, let's say you want to keep exploring, okay, but you run up against a bunch of walls. And now, okay, you can't explore anymore without either fighting one of these monsters or using this health pack. Walking onto the health pack heals you for a bit, but of course I'm at full health, so this would be a waste of a perfectly good health pack. So what Smash allows you to do is actually break a wall. I'm going to break this wall here, boop, and then you can keep exploring. Well, that ran into another dead end. Uh, you can use this once every other fight. So um, let me actually see if it'll... Will it, will it show me here? No, it's not going to show you me. But basically after I kill one monster, it'll be like slightly filled in halfway. And then after I kill the second monster, it'll be ready. And then I'll be able to smash another wall. Um, a lot of the heroes in the game, not all of them, but a lot, do have an ability that basically affects the, the overworld map and helps you explore more. 
So once you've kind of explored everything, you can choose whom to fight. I can fight this griffin who's level 4, and then I will die. I can choose to fight this griffin, which is level 2. I can choose to fight this thief, which is level 2. And I can choose to fight this wyvern, which is level 2. Now, this is kind of interesting. I found nothing but level 2s, which is not a problem. I'll be able to kill one, probably. Um, but usually you find a couple of level 1s early on. So I guess the level 1s are waiting for us elsewhere in the dungeon. When you fight a monster, you basically play, you know, kind of like a, like a game like it would work in a deck building game where you draw a certain number of cards, you can play a certain number of cards per turn to deal damage and do other things, um, and then you play until somebody dies. So let's talk about your hero's stats because this is very important. There's six stats that your hero has um, in addition to their deck. There's their health, mana, gold, um, mana is right here, time, and hand size. Now health persists from fight to fight. So if I fight this wyvern here and I take like, you know, five damage in the fight, then I'm going into the next fight with 10 health. And that's why these health packs might matter is maybe I'd want to like, you know, heal between fights. Mana does not work the same way. Mana does not persist from fight to fight. Instead, the amount of mana that you start each fight with, oh, sorry, this is not mana. Hold on. This bar is experience. Yeah, this is experience. Health, experience. There we go. Gold, mana, time, hand size. Okay, six different things. Um, your mana at the beginning of a fight is equal to your mana stat, which for the warrior is zero, which is fine because I have nothing that costs mana, but obviously for classes that have spells and things, um, you know, how much mana you start the fight with makes a big difference. Now, time is an interesting one. In the game Meteor Fall, it costs one time to play a card. That's not how time works in this game. Basically, the warrior has red bordered cards, which are attack cards, and a sword, which is like brown bordered, that's an equipment card. These are, however, not the only types of cards in the game. There's actually lots of different types of cards in the game. There's attack cards, equipment cards, action cards, spell cards, mana cards, reaction cards, and maybe even something else that I forgot about. Time is used for action cards, which are green bordered. Now, the warrior doesn't start with any of them, so this time stat doesn't actually matter for her, but it's possible that she will pick up some time cards over the or action cards over the course of her run, in which case the time stat will matter. So the action cards are green bordered and they cost time. You get one time each turn of combat and this time stat can be increased. And then at the beginning of each turn, you have, you know, however much your time stat is. It does not carry over from uh, turn to turn. And then hand size is pretty straightforward. That's just how many cards you draw at the beginning of a turn from your deck. Like in Dominion and Ascension and pretty much every deck building game, um, once you go through your whole deck and it's all in the discard pile, you shuffle it up and create a new deck. So there's no problem like in Magic or Hearthstone with running out of cards in your deck. In fact, it's something that happens pretty frequently. And in fact, whole strategies can be built revolving around uh, going through your deck really fast. Now, when you level up, like in Meteor Fall, you heal to full, you get all your health back, and each monster gives you experience equal to its level. This is important because early on you level up a lot, but later on you start to level up less and less frequently. And of course, at that point, uh, sustainability becomes an issue. But in the early game, it's not as big of a deal. Now, in addition to the monsters, you also encounter certain places that you can interact with. These are kind of like the curios in, Dungeon in Darkest Dungeon, for example. So Gouda's Gummy Goodness is a store. It will always have some things for sale, and you can basically buy cards here. Sometimes you can buy uh, stats, like you might be able to pay like 10 gold to increase your maximum health. So uh, here is a green bordered card, Stone Skin. You can see that uh, it costs one time to play it. It's an action card, and it gives you damage reduction too until your next turn. One nice thing about this game is uh, the card text. I'm sorry, I'm going to throw Meteor Fall under the bus. The card text is way better than Meteor Falls, even though this game has way, way more cards. They are almost all, I, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but just in case I forgot one, I'll say almost all rather than all are written way more clearly than the handful of cards are written in Meteor Fall, where I was constantly in Meteor Fall not sure what a card meant in this game. Like it's always really clear and you can also click on it to see exactly what it does. So each physical source prevents two damage, minimum zero. Like it's all really clear. You can see exactly what everything does. At the moment, I have no gold, so I can't buy anything, but let's go ahead and come back to that later. This is an oasis. Now, uh, healing pool, I'm going to call it an oasis. What this does is it lets you either heal maximum or pay one gold to heal one hit point. And the heal max option is free once, but after you use it once, it costs gold the next time. And that's how a lot of buildings in this game work, is that it's free the first time you find it, but subsequent uses require an increasing number of gold coins. One thing about this game that's really important is knowing what the monsters are like, because uh, the, you know, it's possible, for example, that like 
I can actually kill a level 2 griffin, or maybe I can't. Like, I really, you really need to play the game a lot and figure out what kind of cards these monsters tend to play um, to figure out which of them you can confidently kill and which ones you can't. I'm pretty sure I can kill a griffin. Another, another consideration, of course, is how killing a monster frees you up to explore more. It's like this wyvern is down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, whereas this griffin might give me a better chance of getting out and exploring some more. So let's go ahead and fight the griffin for our first fight. Okay, so the griffin has seven hit points, no mana, one action, which may or may not be useful, or one time, and then one card in the hand. Now, I have a 10-card deck, and I drew two attack ones. So the attack cards are pretty straightforward. They deal one physical damage, and you can level them up, as you can see here, a total of three times. Um, so you can level up from one to two, two to three, and three to four, and each time you level it up, it deals an extra one damage. So it's, even at the highest level, it's pretty crappy compared to other cards you can find. But then again, dealing four damage is quite a bit better than dealing one damage. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just play both these cards, and each one deals one damage to the griffin. So the griffin took two damage. And now I pass the turn by clicking on this button, uh, the time button. This is kind of a, like a double a double duty sort of a thing. It, it shows how much time you have, if you, in case you're using action cards, but also clicking on it is how your turn ends. So I draw a new hand, and the griffin played a single action card, Fly. Um, you can... If the, if, the car, if the monster's card went into the discard, you can actually click on it and see what it did. However, this card the, that the griffin just played was exiled, meaning gone for those of the fight, so I actually can't reference it. That's one of the quirky things, is that cards that are exiled, you can't reference what they do, but I'll just tell you, fly makes it immune. Uh, statuses that currently apply to you or to the monster show up for the monster underneath their mana bar and for you above your hero portrait. So right now, the griffin's actually immune to damage. <laughs> Look at that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and click the play all button to just play out my whole hand. And it did no damage, but I wanted to do this anyway because attack ones are the worst cards in my deck, so I want to play them out and draw new cards from my deck rather than holding on to them to play them later. Okay, so now you can see the griffin played attack two and I took two damage. Now let's talk about equipment. The sword is an equipment card. What it does is it gets equipped and stays equipped for the rest of the fight, similar to how equipment works in Meteor Fall. This deals one physical damage for every two attack cards you play in a given turn. So unfortunately, I'm only going to play one attack card this turn, so it's not going to do anything. But it stays equipped, and so in the future, if I can play two attack cards in the same turn, it'll deal one damage. Turns out it didn't matter because these two cards are going to kill the griffin by themselves. But if the griffin had had one more hit point, it still would have died to the sword. After killing a monster, you click the treasure chest, and it tells you how much gold you get and how much experience you get. I wish it stayed around a little longer, because <laughs> if, if when you're trying to teach people how to play, it can be a little bit weird. But you got two experience and eight gold here, as you can see, and now we leveled up. And level ups in this game work similarly to in Meteor Fall, where um, sometimes you get something for leveling up, and then sometimes you also get a, a bonus. Actually, okay, that's not similar at all. In Meteor Fall, each level uh, that you get gives you something specific, either a choice of two cards or health or stamina or some other thing um but there's actually are those the only two things you can get i think so uh whereas uh, you can get a variety of things i'm not sure if there's like a pattern like level two or level three or level four having certain differences but there's a whole bunch of different things you can get you can get uh more time you can get card upgrades you can remove cards from your deck sometimes sometimes you have choices like this sometimes at, at certain preset levels you do unlock um class abilities so anyway, here I have a choice. I get an action card. I can either get Hamstring, which makes the opponent discard all action, i.e. green-bordered cards from their hand, and deals three damage. Or I can get Stone Skin, which is the card we were looking at earlier. It prevents the first two physical damage from each card that the opponent plays until the next turn. So I'm going to go for the defensive option here, the Stone Skin. Hamstring, you know, is good if the opponent has action cards, but if they don't have any action cards, then this doesn't really do anything. So we'll go for the Stone Skin, and now it's in my deck. And you can click on this deck button to see what's in your deck. See, now there's a Stone Skin here. Okay, let's keep exploring. All right, there's another shop. This shop has the ability to buy an action, uh, Frost Slash, and an Equipment Slot. All right, let's talk about Equipment Slots. At the beginning of the game, you don't have any. But each equipment slot that you have allows you to equip one equipment card before the battle begins. So you saw how I drew that sword in that first fight, and then after I drew it, I equipped it. Well, imagine if the sword had been equipped from the beginning of the fight doing its thing. It would be quite a bit better, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have to spend the card spot drawing it and then playing it, so it would help me that way, and its effect would begin from the beginning of the fight. Well, that's what equipment slots are. Each equipment slot that you have allows you to equip one piece of equipment. So let's keep exploring until we can't explore anymore. Oh, wow, quite a lot of exploring is possible on this map. All right, there we go. We are at our wit's end. 
So I don't think I can handle a level 4 griffin at level 2. Maybe I could. And if I could, it'd be good to fight it now so that I could take it out and uh, level all the way up to 4. Uh, and that would be really great. So that's one of those skill points. Like maybe it is possible with this deck to take out that griffin. I'm going to go ahead and play the safe route here. Let's go down to this wyvern and take a stab at it. So this wyvern has 7 hit points, 2 time, and only 1 card. I get my defensive resource up front. Notice that my time went down to zero because stone skin costs a time to play. And it's fine because I get a time every turn, and this is the only card in my deck that costs time, so it's not a problem. Now this icon has appeared, meaning that each two physical damage that I take is reduced by two. Still one damage to the griffin, and pass the turn. Okay, so the griffin stung me, poisoned two. Um, that's unfortunate because my stone skin did not do anything to prevent that whatsoever. Had I taken that hamstring card, the griffin would have taken an extra three damage, or sorry, the wyvern would have taken three damage, and it would have discarded this card because this was in its hand, and it's a green card. So maybe I should have taken the hamstring. Now, the way the poison works is actually the same as in Meteor Fall. Meteor Fall clearly borrowed that idea from this. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you take damage equal to your poison counter, and then your poison counter is reduced by one. So I took, po I got poisoned two, and then at the start of my turn, I took two, as you can see, poison damage, and now my poison counter is one. Okay, my hand's pretty simple here, so I'm just going to play everything. And then I got stung again, so now my poison got increased to th from one to three, and then I took three poison damage. This, this guy's poisoning the crap out of me. All right, let's go ahead and attack it, and if I can survive one more turn, I should be able to kill this thing off. Yep, so I took a decent chunk of damage, eight damage, but my attack comes through. So we're going to kill it, get eight gold and two experience, and I can also now smash, because I've had two fights, and so smash is available. Now here we get two new curios. Treasure chests uh, have random things in them. You can get anything. You can get like equipment slots, additional action, additional health, new cards. Here we have a new card. Storm Slash, deal four lightning damage. So there's four different elements in this game. You got water damage, fire damage, lightning damage, and acid damage. And then earth is sort of the acid category is also responsible for poison damage. Um, this is at level two out of three. So at level 1, these various slash cards deal 2 damage in their given element. At level 2, they deal 4. At level 3, they deal 6. But 4 damage is pretty good for a card. It's better than anything I've got at the moment, so I'm definitely going to learn that. You don't have to take the cards in treasure chests. You can leave them to sit on the floor and pick them up later, or you can just discard them and get rid of them. This is a monastery. The monastery is going to be everybody's favorite card, uh, curio in this game. It allows you to forget... A card so I'm gonna happily forget one of my attack ones so now I get my good stuff more often so it was free the first time now I can pay 10 gold to forget another card and then it'll be 25 gold after that and I don't know if I've ever even done it for the 25 gold so I don't know what it is after that now subsequent monasteries the way that they work is that if I find another monastery the first forgotten card is gonna be free but the next one is gonna be at whatever level I left this monastery at so like if I were to pay 10 gold to forget a card and then the next one would cost 25 gold to forget if I found another monastery, my first card would be free, but the next one would be 25 gold. So it's like the, the current cost beyond the free one is universal. It's not specific to each monastery. Okay, well, I'm down to 10 health uh, out of 18. So let's go ahead and pick up one of these health packs and explore a little bit. Okay, so I have another shop. This one has a fully upgraded Frost Slash, 6 damage. Dancing Scimitar, which deals 3 physical damage at the beginning of your turn to your opponent, and then Berserker Strike, which deals a whopping 10 damage to the opponent and 4 to yourself. Now, not all cards in this game can be upgraded. Unlike in Meteor Fall, where every card besides the potions can be upgraded, in this game, some cards are just what they are. So Berserker Strike's just never going to change. Never change, Berserker Strike. We love you as you are. So I'm probably going to come back and buy this Frost Slash. It's pretty sweet. A uh, card that deals 6 damage in one pop is pretty dope, but it costs 30 gold, so I'll need to save up a little bit before I can pull off that kind of uh, moolah. Here we have a Goblin Hoarder who is level 3. Now the thing about the Goblin Hoarder is that it's a very defensive little bugger. And um, so, so he has some reaction cards that block all the damage that you deal. And he runs away. So if you don't overpower this thing quickly, he's going to run away, which is bad because then you don't get any gold or experience. He's cleared off the map, but you miss out on the reward. So I don't really want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and fight this thief. And I'm optimistic that I can kill him. And then level up, because he'll give me two experience, and after giving me two experience, I will level up. So he played a couple of slices. It's one time, deal a damage, draw a card. So that's how he was able to combo, even though he only had one card in his hand. Now this whopping Storm Slash is going to deal four damage. Kapow, and I can just finish him off. So I'm leveling up. And now we got an uh, a new ability. At level three, you get an ability. 
So cooldown two combats means every other combat you can use it, and it draws a, you a temporary copy of the next card you play. Temporary means that if you don't play it that turn, then it disappears forever. Uh, but it's pretty strong, so you got I could play, for example, um, a sword, and then get another sword, so I can get two swords. Or I can play my Storm Slash, and then get another Storm Slash. So you have to, you can use this to pretty good effect. Now, I have a choice. I can get an additional action per round, or I can get Slash, which deals two physical damage and draws you a card. So it doesn't really take up space in your deck. It doesn't empty your deck either. It doesn't, like, help you get through the deck more quickly. Uh, but it does give you two extra damage whenever you go through your deck. Um, I'm going to go for the Slash, because I don't really want any more actions at the moment, and I would not mind getting some extra damage. So now that I've got some extra damage, and my deck is, you know, pretty good with the Storm Slash, and the Slash, and I got my Sword here, and I cleared out an Attack card, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I can take on this Goblin Hoarder. Um, actually, do I have Smash yet? I do have Smash. Let's go ahead and Smash a Wall, see what's up here. Ooh, the boss, Cumulonimbus! Okay, so that's going to be, uh, the, the, the stairs going down to the second floor. Or underneath this guy. And I was going to say that my uh, object in this video series is first clear the first floor, which is going to take a while, I would imagine, and then clear the second floor, which is going to take forever, and then finally have a run where I can clear the third floor, which may or may not ever actually happen because this game is super hard. But uh, we'll see if I can achieve that first objective, clearing the first floor on this first run through. Let's go ahead and try to see if we can kill this goblin hoarder. So he's only got 10 hit points, but um, he, you know, has some cards that negate damage, and he also, um, you know, starts running away, and then he runs away pretty quickly. I'm going to actually use my first ability here. Draw a temporary copy of the next card you play. So I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to play my sword. So I get another sword. So it doesn't do anything yet, but I now have two swords equipped. So basically, each two attack cards I play in a turn deal an extra two damage, and I'm hoping I can overpower this guy. Now notice he played a reaction card, Cower. Trigger, you take damage, prevent that damage, draw a card. So he's got more than one counter in the deck, so it's definitely a bit of a problem. Okay, he ended up uh, playing an attack and, interestingly, discarding a cower. And you can see here, he is running. When you have three ranks of escape, the fight ends with no loot rewarded. He's at rank one. Okay, so I'm going to play the attack card first, because in case he has another cower, I want it to block the one damage instead of blocking the four damage from my storm slash. This is going to be four damage plus another two for my two swords. Okay, so I need to just get a couple more cards in there, and he's dead. All right, it's at rank one still. Let's play the attack one first. It went through, and the attack two went through. Okay, didn't even need those swords, but we killed him, and we got uh, some gold and three experience. Okay, nothing over here except a big bad cloud. All right, what I'm going to do next is shop. And we're going to buy this Frost Slash for 30 gold, so it's six damage in one card. That's pretty good. I'm also going to grab a health pack up here. Ooh, there's a pixie. Oh, nice little level one pixie. Okay, now a little bit of strategy in this game. Level one monsters are a resource. They're super easy to kill, but they reset your abilities. So like right now, for example, my double strike is on cooldown. But I'm going to kill this pixie, which is going to take approximately zero effort. I actually did not kill it in the first round because I drew both attack ones. Um, he played fire shape. Uh, explosion take oh he just sh sorry she discarded explosion which deals 10 damage kind of epic for a level one uh creature but this is you know a, a magi magic usury sort of themed character didn't have enough mana to play it costs 15 mana so she just discarded it and now i'm gonna go ahead and kill it and now my ability is back and smash is back so i'm gonna go ahead and check down here to see if there's anything in this corner i doubt it but uh, okay and now let's go ahead and fight this griffin. So this griffin is level 4, but it's going to level me up. And I can also now use my ability again. I'm actually going to do it right now. I'm going to use it. Because I drew Frost Slash, my hardest hitting card, I'm going to play it for 6 damage, get another copy of it, play it again for 6 more damage, and I should kill this griffin on the next turn. Unless he plays Fly. Okay, so he played Fly, which makes it immune to all damage. I'm going to play through my attack once. And now I can kill it, because he didn't do any more BS. All right, so we're going to kill it and level up. I can either get two mana or gain six health. That These are randomly selected, and then obviously this is a pretty easy one. I don't use mana, so we're going to gain six extra health. So now I'm at 30 instead of 24. And at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and kill this vampire bat. If I take damage in this fight, I can heal at the oasis, and it's going to give me back this ability, which is currently on cooldown. So that's why I'm fighting this bat. I don't actually care about it that much, but I want to uh, get my ability back for the final boss. So it's really important when you go around your map that you look to see like who all is left. 
because you don't want to, for example, end up with your ability on cooldown going into the final boss. You also don't want to end up taking, you know, going into the final boss damaged for no real reason. Okay, so I don't even need the Oasis. I can just pop this health pack. Now with 26 gold, let's see if there's anything good I can buy at these shops. So I can get Berserker Strike, which I'm not a super big fan of. 10 damage to your opponent and 40 yourself. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the Slash cards deal 6 damage and without any repercussions. Here we can get Flame Slash for 4 fire damage. Okay, that's fine. And then here um, we can get... Uh, Frost Slash for, for water damage. I've already got a water card, so I'd like to get a flame card if possible. Obviously, um, well, not actually, not obviously. In this game, monsters really cover a wide gamut. There's monsters that punish you if you're playing elemental. There's monsters that punish you if you play too much physical damage. There's monsters that are immune to one element and vulnerable to another. There's monsters that punish you for having a big deck. Monsters that punish you for having a small deck. I mean, you really have to be very, very finessed in order to cover all the different obstacles that you can encounter. But um, I could also just consider saving up for an equipment slot. And that's a tempting choice. And I could, you know, buy this Dancing Scimitar. The farther the game goes, the less good this becomes. Um, and there's plenty of monsters that are either resistant to physical damage, meaning they only take half damage from physical attacks, and some monsters are even immune to physical damage. So uh, it's possible that this will not be very good um, for long. But I want to spend my gold on something so I can actually try to clear this first floor. In my first video. Another option is I could go to the monastery and spend some gold to forget an attack card. Let's actually, uh, let's just do that. Let's go here and spend 10 gold. Let's get rid of this attack once and my deck is just that much better. Now the next one is 25 gold, which I can't do and I can't afford anything else. So let's see if we can take on this Cumulonimbus. Now this Cumulonimbus is a tough enemy for me because it is resistant to physical damage, meaning it takes half damage from physical attacks. It's also immune to air, which sucks because one of my cards is a, is a Storm Strike, and it deals uh, electric, electric damage. So notice that I did very little damage here. These, this attack 1 did nothing because it's, it's rounded down. The Slash only did 1, and then I did draw my Frost Slash, which dealt 6. Now you'll notice I should not have played a Press the Play All button. That is a mistake that could make me lose the fight because what I really should have done is I should have used my ability to double the Frost Slash, which is the best card in my deck against this enemy. So that was a bit of a silly move. All right, he played an attack two and a zap. Your opponent loses all mana and time. Well, good news, I don't use my mana. Unfortunately, I did draw my card that costs time. Now, Storm Slash does no damage, and attack card only does one damage. I'm going to keep the stone skin, though, because I do actually want to play it. I think that could be important. All right, so let's go ahead and play the stone skin to block uh, two physical damage from each card he plays. This does nothing, and then this sword will do nothing, because the sword deals one physical damage for every two attack cards that I play in a turn, and that gets rounded down to zero. Okay, so I'm just going to play out my cards and do very little because of this physical resistance. This next turn I'm only going to deal one damage. Okay, this is going pretty terribly, but alright, now let's, 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 let's actually play smart here. So we're going to play my ability, draw a temporary copy of the next card you play. I'm going to play Frost Slash for 6 water damage, and then another Frost Slash for another 6 water damage. And these cards are junk. And now I need... Oh, God. Okay, I'm down to 5 health. I need to just tickle him to death. So this is 1 damage right here. This is 1 damage right here. This can hopefully help me survive a turn, and then that does nothing. So I need one more bit of damage. Oh, my God, I actually made it. Slash will deal 1 damage, and that's what I need to win. So barely made it through, and we get a bunch of experience and a bunch of gold and level up. Okay, so this is a tricky one. We can get an additional equipment slot, so I can start with my sword equipped, or I can delete a card from my deck. So it's a tough call here. I'm going to go ahead and delete a card from my deck because it's difficult to pass up on that. Let's get rid of this attack one. And now um, you can go back and do some more shopping here uh, on this level. I'm going to actually, I think, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and buy an equipment slot. So I'm out of money to do anything super significant, but now the sword is equipped. You can click on this E here, actually, and then you can have the sword in your deck. And you may want to do this if, for example, you want to, like, copy the sword with your warrior ability. So you, you can't do that if it starts the fight equipped. So sometimes, strategically, you might actually not want a piece of equipment to be equipped. But for now, I will go ahead and have the sword equipped, and we complete the level. Okay, so once you get to the second floor, you get to choose a talent. You can either get 30 gold, an extra time... You can get another equipment slot, 5 health, 2 mana, or you can train one of your cards. Let's go ahead and grab the gold here and see if I can 
find something good in one of the shops. All right, here we have a crazy old man. This guy gives you a card that you need in order to defeat the lich. So if you see this crazy old man, that means that the boss on this floor will be the lich, which is bad because the lich is an annoying boss. Let's go ahead and upgrade a card for free at the blacksmith. We'll get our storm slash up to level three. So now it deals four lightning damage, or sorry, six lightning damage instead of four. And I'll hold off on this until I find better cards to upgrade. I don't necessarily want to upgrade like these crappy attack cards that much. I'd rather upgrade like the elemental abilities. So I'm just exploring here. Uh -huh. There's a level four skeleton. There's a level four Medusa. And there's a level four ooze. Okay, I'm gonna use my smash to keep exploring. It's worth noting that there are monsters starting in the second floor that can ambush you, forcing you to have a fight with them um, when you run into them. Or when you run into a space, they just appear and they fight you. So uh, there is some danger to just exploring once you get to the second floor. However, at the moment, I'm not concerned because I'm at full health, so you know, bring it on. Okay, that's as much as I can explore. I need 12 more experience to level up. Banshees are tough because they are resistant to physical damage. So I'd rather fight the Banshee last than fighting it now because um, I want to level up after I kill it and then get healed. I also want to have my double strike available for the Banshee so I can copy my Frost or my Storm Slash. So I don't want to fight the Banshee. Uh, oh, hang on. There's actually one place I can explore here. This is an altar. Now, the way that altars work is that you, you get the description and then you can invoke it. The first time that you do this, you get an effect uh, that you don't really know what it is. Um, however, in subsequent playthroughs, if you invoke an altar that you had explored or invoked in a previous playthrough, then you get a little thing that says like a, a pull of memory tugs at the back of your mind. This is what it'll do. Generally, you get some nice reward for some terrible drawback and it's pretty much not ever worth it. Um, but there is an achievement for an, for praying at all six altars over the course of your runs and that unlocks a new class, the Necromancer. So because of that, I will invoke this. I just want to do it later um rather than now so hopefully i don't die against this medusa so i can invoke that altar and make some progress on the achievement so the medusa has two cards 15 health and one of the medusa's things is that it uh, turns your cards into curses so if you drag out this fight too long against the medusa your entire deck will eventually be curses and you'll just auto lose so there is definitely some urgency to kill her quickly i should be able to do it but uh you know you never know in this game. Things can surprise you. See, there's a curse already. Okay. Luckily, if I can just deal one more damage, we're going to be good. Okay, I'll discard a curse. And there's a storm slash to finish her off. Okay, so that went pretty well. I only took four damage, and I got my ability back. I'm at eight hit points away from leveling up. Let's fight this ooze. Now, the ooze can absorb your cards. Um, it can... It can eat them, which I believe heals it, and it also makes them disappear for the rest of the fight. Um, I am going to Storm Slash, but I'm not going to copy the Storm Slash. I want to save my ability for the next fight against the Banshee. So there it is. It's Digest. What does it do exactly? Your opponent exiles a card at random from there. Okay, so it doesn't heal them, but exile means it's gone for the rest of the fight. It, it'll be back in the next fight. It's not permanently deleted, but for that fight, it's gone. So again, this is kind of a way of punishing you for having an overly small deck. Anyway, we killed it without too much fuss. And so now, let's explore up here. All right, treasure chest. Holy strike, nice. Deal two damage, gain two health. Okay, that's really good. Get some healing. And I'm actually going to upgrade this to deal four damage and heal four health. In fact, I'm going to upgrade it again. Let's get it fully upgraded. The blacksmith is relatively cheap. And now that I'm going to level up, I'm going to go ahead and fight this Banshee. Actually, hang on. I can smash. Let's smash this. See what we get. Oh, nowhere. Okay. Well, Banshee it is. So she's resistant to physical damage. And resistant is a pretty big deal in this game. It means that only taking half. And it's rounded down. So I'm going to use my cooldown on this. We're going to copy Storm Slash for six damage. And then get another six damage in. And then do two damage with these two cards. I have to discard two cards. Well, my best card here is Frost Slash. I hope she doesn't make me discard it. Oh, she played another thing, so she discarded my Frost Slash, which would have killed her. And then, of course, after that, I drew three cards that all do nothing, because one rounded down is zero. All right. I am going to keep my Holy Strike. This will deal three damage and heal me for six. 
So it's a good thing I upgraded it because that's really, really helpful here. And now I can finish her off with Storm Slash. Okay, so I leveled up. And now I can either get two mana or an equipment slot. Well, one is totally useless and the other one's pretty great. So I guess we'll take the one that's pretty great. Keep exploring. Ghouls are very weird. What ghouls do is they're completely immune to all damage, but they automatically die after a set number of turns. So the only cards in your deck that matter are defensive cards, in this case Holy Strike and Stone Skin, otherwise nothing else matters. So that's a tough fight. Ah, Linda's Lemonade. Okay, so we haven't seen one of these before. When you come to one of these, you can get a free thing, either five bonus health, four bonus, ex or some health, some experience, some mana. I don't know if these numbers are always the same. And then after that, you can pay uh, to upgrade these levels. Let's go ahead and grab the health. And notice each one of these is cost five, and they're all they're all on their own track. So if I get this health again now, the health now costs twenty gold, but the other two things each cost five. And uh, as is the case with monasteries and blacksmith anvils, this is universal. So if I find another Linda's lemonade after I get my free upgrade at that new Linda's lemonade, the health is going to be twenty, and then the mana and experience will still be five. I might get this experience later if it helps me level up, and I feel like I'm in a pinch. But what I need right now is I need to have a fight that gets me back my ability. So I'm going to fight this skeleton. The skeleton's shtick is it has a lot of defensive abilities. But um, I'm optimistic that I won't take too much damage from him and will still be able to kill him pretty quickly. Okay, he put up a bone shield which blocks the next six damage. So Holy Strike will negate that. And unfortunately I don't quite kill him here. Um, but I only took three damage, or four damage total, and then we killed him off with the Frost Slash. So I got my cooldown back. And I also got a new ability, Adrenaline Rush. It's once every third fight, so it's a little bit difficult to manage this one. Uh, but it draws you three cards, which is, you know, pretty sweet. So what I'm going to do here is go down and fight this clone, because uh, I really... I, this is this gives me some more places to explore, and I'm not 100% sure I can beat the clone, so we're going to go ahead and pray at this altar. So I draw one additional card each turn, but four curses are added to my deck. This is obviously terrible, <laughs> because uh, the extra card will often be negated by a curse. The smaller your deck is, the worse that this is. Um, this is, I guess, good if you have... Uh, there are certain cards in the game that are like, you know, discard a card and get an effect. I don't have anything like that, so it's just bad. But let's go ahead and fight this clone, level 7, and uh, he, the clone has a lot of the same cards that you have, which is not surprising. I'm going to use my abilities against this clone, so I'm going to copy my Frost Slash to deal an extra 6 damage. Notice the clone is a rather whopping amount of hit points. Um, and uh, what the hell, let's go ahead and also draw 3 cards. Okay, so I'll put up Stone Skin, discard the curse, and then just play everything else. Okay, so I'm blocking damage, I took out a decent chunk of health. He's playing a sword. He's so you got the same exact cards that I do. Uh, I'm going to discard these curses, play these other two cards, and end my turn. Okay, I just love drawing curses, so let's discard them. Holy Strike will heal me for six, which is really good. And all right, looks like I'm winning this race here. All right, the Stone Skin is good because it's blocking the attack card and my sword, but the Frost Slash and the Storm Slash do not care about Stone Skin. Unfortunately, I'm not going to kill him this turn, but I do get my stone skin, so I can hopefully uh, make it to the next turn without taking too much damage, and now he is going to die. He did a pretty good chunk of damage to me here. Oh man, so this this right here, this blocks all my cards. <laughs> okay, Storm Slash, thankfully, will get through that physical resistance and kill him, but everything else was going to just get reduced to zero thanks to stone skin. Alright, I took a lot of damage there. Uh, we did find a shop. So we can get a Great Bow, which deals one damage for each action card I play. I currently only have Stone Skin, so that seems kind of silly. Crush can destroy an equipment card and deal three damage, but if the opponent doesn't have any equipment cards, it does nothing, and I can get an equipment slot, which is weird because I currently don't have any other equipment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this Oasis and heal, because at this point, at 16 health, if I did get ambushed by something, I could very reasonably die. Wow, lots of shops here. This is Shop Lane. Uh, rush. Physical damage equal to a quarter of your health. Your next source of damage this turn is piercing. Draw a card. And another slash. I'm going to get... Actually, I'm going to look at this other shop first, but then I think I am going to get that piercing card. Repost. An opponent plays an attack card. The attack card has no effect. Deal two damage. Draw a card. Ooh, I'm going to do that. That's pretty good. So, uh, this is a reaction card. That's the orange border. And it can totally... I mean, it's pretty amazing. It deals damage. 
It blocks um, damage, so it increases your survivability, and it replaces itself, so it's just pretty solid all around. There's the boss for the level, the Lich. You have to make sure you get the Lich kick, or else you can't kill it. Here's a level 7 Elite, which I'm not super excited to fight at the moment, and let's go ahead and grab Piercing Stab. So this card replaces itself, and it makes your next source of damage Piercing. Now, obviously, if I get it and Stone Skin at the same time, I cannot play them both, but with all those extra curses in my deck, maybe that is less likely to happen, and by... Piercing damage is important. You have to be a little careful because I was confused when I first began playing this game. Um, you know, in typical D&D, you know, there's there's crushing damage, piercing damage, and slashing damage. That's not how it works. In this game, there's physical damage, there's various types of elemental damage, and piercing damage is uh, a damage type that basically bypasses just about all the defenses an opponent can have. Uh, it will not damage someone who's immune to damage like the ghoul. But it gets past, like, physical resistance, you know, it, it gets past shields and wards and things. So turning a piece of, uh, turning one of your cards into piercing damage can be really, really strong, and it replaces itself, so uh, I, I figure the versatility is worth having. Okay, so now we need 13 more experience to level up. Let's think about how we want to do this. I guess I'm going to go fight the Banshee. I think I got a decent shot of being able to kill this Banshee, because I now have a variety of elemental attacks. Um... And there's still stuff on the floor that I can heal from. And I also have this piercing stab. Unfortunately, it uh, did not come with anything really great. But I dealt two damage with this attack card instead of one. So it did something. Okay, so I blocked this attack three, did some damage, and drew a card. Stone skin is nice. Holy strike will deal three and heal me for six. This attack does nothing. I'm not even going to bother playing it. All right, so let's draw a card. Ooh, uh, that does nothing, but okay. Got through a curse. Now let's discard all these curses and end my turn. Got my repost back, so I blocked an attack two. And now let's heal for six. So that healing is definitely coming into play. Let's put some resistance on from Stone Skin, deal one damage through her physical resistance, and then draw a hand that does pretty much nothing. Um, just the attack two will deal one damage, and that's it. Okay, let's get rid of these cards. Please don't play another Scream. God darn it! Oh, that's bad. That threw away six healing and a total of nine damage. Ugh, terrible. Okay, well, great. Just great. Okay, so got, of course, a terrible hand I wouldn't have minded discarding on the next round. Please don't play another Scream. Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. Man, this might have been a terrible idea. Uh, so I'm down to 9 health. I am, however, healing up to 15, so thank god I have that holy strike. I really need to get through here. Oh god, I can deal 1 damage this turn. <laughs> it's lovely. She's at 19. Okay, can I keep my hand, please? Oh my god. Oh my god, I need to keep my hand. Oh, okay, thank goodness. So at least I get 6 damage through with this Frost Slash. But we got a problem here, Houston, because I'm just dead. I discarded my hand at the wrong time. So luck is definitely an element in this game. If I had lost one of my crappy hands and gotten to keep that hand that did the bunch of damage, I might have been able to make it. But at the same time, maybe I shouldn't have fought this Banshee. Maybe I should have uh, fought that ghoul. Um, and maybe I should have had some cooldowns here. Um, so I lose. And now we get some achievements. Die once is a very easy achievement. Now at the beginning of the game, you get a talent right away. We also got uh, carry big sticks, so my characters start with three extra gold, which is nice. And we get the meditation card. This is a pretty good card. Um, obviously, you don't start with it or anything. It's just now available to be found on the runs. Uh, the desperate talent um, is not that great, but it's there now. And the crumble talent's also not that great, but it's there. And then your characters gain one additional health and level up. That's great. So some of these achievements, like your characters gain additional health and level up, or your character start with three gold, just make it easier to play from this point forward. Um, and that's one thing I, I'm not a super big fan of. Compared to Meteor Fall, I do like that in Meteor Fall, like there's, well, other than unlocking the cards, there's really nothing that makes it just easier. Although unlocking the cards definitely does just make things easier, so maybe that's a bad comparison. But anyway, some of the achievements you unlock do just make the game easier. And then here are my achievement points. So I began with zero, because it, it was a new account. Each floor cleared gives 100 achievement points, and each monster killed gives whatever 69 divided by 13 is. What, what is 69 divided by 13? Uh, 13, 26, 39, 52, 65? 
I don't know how 69 is divisible by 13, but whatever, it's maybe, oh, maybe it's a fraction. Maybe there's like a, like a 0.2 in there or a 0.5. Anyway, the point is we got 69 from killing the monster. So 169 total points. So you can see something that costs, you know, 2,000 achievement points to unlock is not that far away. You just have to play like 10, 15 times and then you get it. Obviously, if I hadn't cleared the first floor, though, I would have had way fewer achievement points. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this starting guide and sample playthrough, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.